Hello, in this lecture we're going to talk about the product mix decision. At the end of this we will be able to describe the decision process on which product to produce and how many to produce. So we're thinking about an idea of having two products in this case and the question is well how much of those products should we produce? Meaning if we have product A as we do over here and product B, how much of product A should we produce and how much of product B should we, what should we produce? And that's the decision we're going to look into with our problem here. We're going to have, in this case, product A, product B. Those are the products that we sell. We have the selling price of $240 for A, $270 for B. We have variable cost of $105 and $106. I mean, $105 and $162. If we subtract those two out, we get the contribution margin per unit. So remember, the contribution margin per unit, that's going to be the selling price per unit less the variable part costs per unit. That's what we're walking away from. Uh, in terms of what we get to keep after variable costs after each unit of production not taken into consideration the fixed costs which we'll take into consideration uh, at a later point so then we're going to have the machine hours are going to be 0.4 and 1 and then we have the maximum unit sales per month so we think we could sell 650 of A product A per month and 250 of product B per month now if we look at this data we know that we can see that the contribution margin is 3, 135 for A and only 108 for B. So then the, we would come to the conclusion based just on that data that if we sell every unit of A we sell, we get more money than every unit of B we sell. Uh, and if everything else was equal, that would be the conclusion we would come to. But we often have this constraint of time and either in labor time or in machine time. So it's often a good idea to look at that constraint, find what the constraint is in terms of how much time it takes, either machine hours or labor hours, and then have the comparison, and it's going to be the calculation of the contribution margin per machine hour. So in this case, it takes uh, 0.4 of an hour to produce product A in this constraint area, the biggest constraint being the machine hours, and it takes one hour to produce product B. So we want to take that into consideration. That's the first thing we will do. Uh, added data down here, we got the current operating hours per month. So we only have the 176 hours that we are currently uh, using in terms of the machine hours. That's going to be our constraint that we have at this point. And then we're going to have a new proposal. We'll, we'll analyze after the, this proposal, which is going to be to increase that number of hours to 352, which will also increase the, some fixed costs as well. So first we're going to calculate the contribution uh, margin per machine hour. So here's the contribution margin per unit, uh, the sales per unit minus the variable cost per unit. And now we're going to calculate that with regard to the constraint to get to the contribution margin per machine hour. So we're going to take the contribution margin per unit, 135 for A and 108 for product B. And then we're going to take the number of machine hours, which is 0.4 for A and 1 hour for B. And that's going to give us the contribution margin per machine hour which is going to be the 337. Obviously, we're dividing this out. It's the 135 divided by 0.4 is giving us the 337.5. The 108 divided by 1 is the 108. So it just so happens in this particular problem that the contribution margin per unit looks like it's, it's higher, of course, for A than B, and the contribution margin per uh, machine hour is higher for A than for B. But be aware that that may not always be the case in, in other types of scenarios. It could quite be possible that the contribution margin per unit uh, has, has the mix going one way, meaning A being better here and B being better over here. And oftentimes we would want to go in this scenario with the constraint uh, by the contribution margin per the constraint per the machine hour in this case. So we're going to use this to help us to analyze how much we should then produce. Next thing, next step, we're going to have the, the hours required to produce the maximum number of units. So just to analyze how many, how many hours would it take in order to produce the units that we want to sell, that we think we could sell. So notice we think we can sell 650 of A. We think we can sell 250 of B per month. So how long would it take us to produce those many units? We could start looking at that question. Uh, 650 A, six, uh, 250 hours for B. So machine hours per unit, we have the 40.4 for A. It takes 0.4 hours per unit and it takes one hour per unit for B. Therefore, hours required to produce the maximum is going to be the 260, which is going to be the 650 times the 0 0.4, 260 hours, and it would take 250 hours to produce what we think we could sell in B. 
So that would be total machine hours of 510. Now, of course, that's going to be a huge constraint to us. We don't have 510 at the moment. We have uh, 176. That's why that's our constraint. That's why that's the bottleneck. We have a proposal to go up to 352, but we don't have enough time to produce as many units as we believe we could sell uh, under this scenario at this point in time. So then we're going to calculate the most profitable product mix under this under this scenario. And, and obviously what we're going to do is we're going to produce as much of A as possible because it has the higher contribution margin per machine hour. And therefore, uh, we're going to produce basically all of A. It's going to take 260 hours to produce as many of the units that we can sell. We're not, we're not even going to get there because we only have 176 hours. So we're going to apply all that 176 hours to producing A first. And then we'll analyze, well, what if we up those hours? So we're going to say we're going to put all the hours into A. And therefore, we're going to take the machine hours per unit is the 0.4. And that'll give us the units to produce, which is the um, 176 divided by 0.4. So we think we can produce then of a 440. That's the max we can produce under this current scenario. We'd like to produce 650 because that's how many we can sell. But that's where we're at at this point. So contribution margin is going to be the 135. Remember what that is. That's the sales per unit minus the variable cost per unit. That what's, that's what we're walking away with after each unit sale. Uh, after the variable costs and then we've got the total contribution margin if we multiply that out it's going to be the 440 units times what we're walking away with at each unit giving us the 59 400 and that's the total because we have nothing in column b because we're not going to be producing anything for b under this first scenario okay now we're going to look at the proposal the new proposal being okay well we have way more sales that we think we could sell than we are producing why don't we increase uh, our hours from 176 to 352? And if we do that, then it's going to also increase the uh, some fixed cost by 13,500. Would that be a profitable thing to do? And if so, how much of product A and product B should we produce under this scenario? So first, we're, we're going to say that we have this many hours. I'm going to say we got 352 hours that we can produce at. We're still going to try to produce as much of A as possible before we move to uh, producing B. So we're going to allocate all these hours we have until we can't sell any more of A. How many units can we sell? We're coming to this uh, 650. So we got 650 that we think we can sell. We're going to multiply that times 0.4 per unit. And that means that we're, we have 260 hours that we're going to allocate to product a before we start allocating to product b so we got the 650 hours for product a and that means that we have the spillover to product b we got the th 352 total hours and we're going to put uh, 260 whoop, 260 to product a therefore the remaining 92 is what we're going to allocate to product b so that's where we're going to get our allocation this many hours to a this many to b all right so then the machine hours per unit are 0.4 and the one and that will give us the units to produce so the 260 uh, divided by 0.4 that's given us our 650 that's what we wanted because that's how many we believe we can sell of product a and we want to sell all product a before we move on to product b and then the 92 times the one means we're going to make another 92 of product b and so that means the contribution margin per unit or that let's take the contribution margin per unit that's the 135 remember what that is it's the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit and for product b 108 so that will give us the total contribution margin if we multiply the 650 uh number of units we're going to make times the contribution margin what we're going to walk away with after each uh unit sale uh after variable cost not including fixed costs 87,750 and 9,936, giving us a total of 97,686. If we're going to compare that to the contribution margin before, we're looking at the relevant costs to see if this is a good option, if we should do this. We're trying to see if we should be up in the hours from here to here. So we're going to compare that to what the contribution margin was uh, without this scenario. And obviously, the contribution margin is higher by the 38 286 that's the 97.686 minus the 59400 and we also have to take into account the fixed costs so notice what we're taking into account is the added fixed costs. we said if we do this it's going to have an added fixed costs costs that don't change with the level of production 
And if we do that comparison, we're going to say that uh, it still clears the fixed costs. So the increase still clears the fixed costs. So we have an, an increase of 24,786. Therefore, this is a good thing to do for us. We're saying that yeah, that looks like a good idea. Let's let's do that. Now, you might have a question. You might be saying, well, why are we taking these fixed costs in here? Where are the fixed costs related to producing the original you know, units? Where are the fixed costs in, in our original scenario? We did have the fixed costs in there, but notice that those aren't relevant to the decision to move forward because those fixed costs would be there whether we do the new scenario or not. These fixed costs, we're saying, would, would jump up if we did the new scenario. The prior fixed costs would not. That's why we're only comparing the contribution margins which take into account the sales price minus the variable costs. Okay, so let's take a look at one more scenario. Now we're going to say alternative number two. Company can increase product A maximum sales to 700 by spending 12500 per month in advertising. So, of course, here comes the marketing department wants money for advertising. And they say that uh, if they get 12500 we can increase the sales for uh, product A from the 650 to 700 why would we want to do that because remember the contribution margin per unit as well as the contribution margin per constraint machine hour is higher so if we're, the idea being if we can sell more product a at the higher contribution margins then we can uh, generate more money so the question is that's true so so if we increase that does it clear the fixed cost that we're gonna to have to pay for it which is the 12,500 that's the analysis that we have so we have the machine hours applied to each unit I know we're gonna have a total of 352 because we're assuming we are accepting proposal one so we're kind of comparing proposal one now that's where we're at at this point to proposal two so we have the 352 units rather than what we started with with the 176 and uh, we're gonna apply those of course to product a first so we're gonna have 700 that we think that we can sell of product a and it has 0.4 hours so we're going to multiply that times 0.4 so we're going to apply 280 to product a so of this 352 we're applying 280 to product a in terms of hours and that means that product b is going to have 352 minus the 280 of 72 to product b so that's how we're going to break out the hours producing a first and then b so then we have the machine hours per unit going to be the 0.4 and the one and we're going to have the units produced then so we're going to have this many many hours to produce and that's going to give us uh this divided by this it gives us the 700 which of course is what we calculated here and then the 72 times one means we're going to produce 72 of b so now note that the change, of course, made us reallocate more to product A than to product B because we can sell more of A and the contribution margin is higher for A. We're going to multiply that times the contribution margin, which is the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit, what we're walking away with after each unit sale before fixed cost after variable cost, 135 and 108. We multiply that out. The total contribution margin then is the 700 units times the contribution margin per unit, giving us the 94,500 and for product B, 72 times the 108, giving us the 7,776. All right, so we have the total then, the total contribution margin being the 94,500 plus the 7,776, 102, 276. We're going to compare that to what the contribution margin was for the prior uh, project. And note, once again, we're looking at the contribution margin in this case, not this added 13,500 of fixed cost. We've already assumed that's going to happen whether we we do second proposal or not because we've already accepted the first proposal. So this is irrelevant. That's not in our factor here. We're taking the contribution margin from the prior calculation and we're going to say the change then it is going to increase 4,590. So this is a good plan in that it increases the 4,590. But in order to do that, we got to put down 12,500 to do that. So that doesn't look that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So that's a that's a no go on that one. Now now if the marketing department was able to increase uh, the the sales of product A, you know higher than 700, or uh, they wanted to, if if they could do it for something you know less than 4,000 rather than 12,000, possibly. <laughs>